here we go, cognition part two, where we're going to talk about language and how we develop it. When we're talking about language, first we got to talk about what is the smallest unit of language, and that is a phoneme, right? So this is like going back to like first grade, kindergarten, where we're teaching kids how to read stuff. We're talking about basic stuff here. So a phoneme is the smallest sounds in language. So for instance, if I have the word bat, this has three phonemes in it, b, a, and t, right? So this, that each sounds, if I have um, chat, this also has three phonemes in it, ch is one phoneme, a, and t. All right, so a phoneme is just the um, smallest units of sound in language, all right? A morphine is the smallest unit of sound that has some sort of meaning, so b, by itself doesn't mean anything, but if we have the word or the suffix ed at the end, um, for instance, if we put have the word fix and then we put ed at the end, right, we mean he fixed something in the past. So ed at the end of something makes it past tense. Or you may put um, an at the beginning of something, a prefix means not, right, or no. So, morpheme is the smallest unit of sound that makes that has meaning to it. Okay, moving on to grammar. So these are sounds. Grammar is now the rules for this. Uh, so I mentioned that ed right uh, is has meaning, and grammar says, well, if you put ed at the end of a word, it can be, make it past tense. So grammar is is the rules. So grammar comes down to semantics and syntax. Semantics is what the, the rules mean, right? And that's what I just talked about. That's semantics. Um, adding ed to the end of a word makes it past tense, right? So semantics is the, the rules for the meaning of words. Syntax is the rule. So both of these, syntax and semantics, are your grammar here, okay? Uh, syntax is the rules for how we put things together. For instance, in English, right, we put the adjective before the noun. So we would say the red, as I draw it in blue, car, right? In Spanish, it would be opposite, right? So Spanish, the syntax rules are different than uh, English, right? You would say Carl Rojo in Spanish. You love my Spanish accent, I know. Thank you very much. Um, and then so it depends on what language you're talking about here. So not the, the syntax, the rules, and the semantics for different language for languages are different depending on which language you're talking about. Likewise with the phonemes and the morphemes. The different sounds in each language might be different, but the, the rules are the same. So phonemes, it's the smallest unit of sound. Each language might have a different smallest unit of sound. Morphemes are the smallest unit that have that makes sense. Each language might have a different smallest unit that makes sense. And then grammar are the rules for that language, okay? So all languages follow these, this, this pattern here, this, uh, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, this path, and uh, you just go from there. Now, how do we, when we're developing language, you know, what are some milestones that we hit? Well, first of all, when you're, you know, first you got to start babbling, right? My son, who's six months old right now, is in this babbling stage, right? So babbling starts at about four months. And that's where you just start making sounds. They don't have to mean anything. They don't sound anything like the language spoken at home. They're just sounds, right? Right now, my son, you know, has, we'll give him Cheerios or these puffs, and he just starts going crazy and making all these, like, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, it has no sound. Like, we don't talk like that at home, right? Uh, not usually, at least. And so when he says that, you know, it's just this babbling sound. At about 12 months, you start this one word stage where you might say car or ball. And the one word stage that, when you say the, like the word ball, you know, ball could mean a number of different things. Call, ball could mean I want the ball. Ball could mean, hey, there's a ball over there. Ball could mean, look what I've got, a ball. Ball could mean, I mean, you're, the one word stage could mean a number of different things. Um, then in about 24 months, right, so in about two years, you start this two-word stage, and part of the two-word stage includes telegraphic speech. Um, and telegraphic speech is mostly nouns and verbs. 
All right, so you're mostly nouns and verbs. You might say car fast, or you might say, ooh, dog scary. And so it's, oh, scary was to be an adjective, huh? Um, but dog, nouns and verbs. So telegraphic speech is usually that. And then once you get past 24 months and you're getting into the preschool years, uh, language just develops like a wildfire. And the, these kids just, when they're in preschool, they just start getting so much language. And this is one of the reasons why preschool and educating your kid, you know, keeping them, uh, giving them an environment where they can learn is so important at such a young age because they're able to pick up this information so, so quickly. And if they don't pick it up during this, this time, this time is what we call a critical period, right? We talked about critical period in developmental psychology, right? It's this period where you need to develop something or else the window closes and it becomes much harder. Um, that is critical period for language early on in life. And so it's really important to uh, nurture that. All right, so last thing we need to talk about here with language is two guys like I talk about, well, how do we learn this language? Um, my man right here, this is Skinner, right? This is B.F. Skinner, the man himself, right? Rocking those glasses, uh, always has the cool comb straight back hair. Skinner said it's, you learn language by operant learning. So basic operant conditionings. And we haven't talked about the learning section yet, but um, operant learning, he says basically stuff like association, association, um, imitation, and reinforcement, enforcement, is how we learn language. So we learn language basically from other people. So we associate the sounds and stuff that our parents make, or that our family makes, or our friends make, or their children make, and we, we associate that with what we see, and, we, and then we start to imitate it, right? So we imitate what they say. And then when our parents or our friends or teacher or whatever says, yeah, good job, you did it. Then they reinforce your language. You know, we, we keep it and we uh, learn it because we've been reinforced by it. And so Skinner says language is, is operantly learned. Um, Noam Chomsky, which is this guy right here, um, uh, he's actually a very big psychologist, not just with language, but with... Um, the whole cognitive psychology, because he basically said, um, we are pre-wired. He said, we're pre-wired. And we have this pre-wired universal language acquisition device in their brain, right? So he says, all people across all cultures have this, we're pre-wired in our brains to learn these uh, words. Uh, and some of the reasons that Noam says this, that Chomsky says this, is he says, no kid is, right, we don't ever say, right, you've heard little kids say, I ran to the store, or I, um, what, what would, might they say? They might say, I rammed the car, right? Instead of rammed the car, I rammed the car. And, you know, they add these, like, extra EDs, or they add, the, add just an S to everything, when in, in English it's not plural. We don't talk like that at home, but yet they do it. They generalize this rule. And so he says, that kind of shows that we're pre-wired, if we're given the opportunity to develop this language, we're pre-wired to, to develop it. And we just need to be given a, a nurturing environment, kind of like a flower. flower flower is going to grow. If you give it a little water, a little sunshine, give it the environment to do it, it's going to grow. It's pre-wired to grow and become this beautiful, uh, you know, mature flower. It starts out as this little seedling. So the children are, are kind of the same way. Um, they're pre-wired to do this. Um, he says, all languages have the same universal building blocks. They all have nouns, verbs, etc. But um, they all are developed, you know, in the same manner. Um, kind of what psychologists would say today is that, you know, it's they're both can help explain language. Chomsky, Chomsky talks most about, um, you know, your inherent biological ability to get language. But Skinner, you can't, uh, you can't negate the fact that we do learn a lot of things from those around us. We're reinforced by it. And so again, this is another case, you know, in psychology where nature and nurture kind of go together, right? We talk a lot about this, how it's, there's people on the nature side, there's people on the nurture side, but most of the time it's a combination of both of them. And I think that's the case with language as well. So there you go. That's language and uh, we'll see you next time.